Hello everyone, what is up? And welcome back to the stream. Uh, we've got a little bit of NFL DFS to talk about from the weekend. Got a little best ball stuff to talk about. Should be a pretty uh, pretty good show, I think. A uh, couple programming things, though, just to talk about. As always, I want to remind you guys, you have a shot to pick up a free Twitch Prime sub. As long as you have an Amazon Prime account. So follow the panel link that I have below. If you're checking this out on Twitch, uh, and get that free Twitch Prime sub, all you have to do is link your account. Uh, you know, obviously, want to make sure that you get bang for your buck on that. Uh, no obligation to use your free sub on this channel, but definitely try to use it on one of the fantasy guys, uh, Holka, Hodge, Al, Manny, uh, any of those guys. Really good for me. Um, you know, keep it within the family. If you are on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button right below this video. Uh, free of charge to subscribe gets you, um, you know, notification anytime I post a new video, and obviously it gets me closer to my sub goal of 100, which will allow me to uh, get rid of this despicable, disgusting default URL and allow me to get a custom URL. Uh, and of course, if you're checking out the stream for the first time, you're not sure you want to sub, at least hit the follow button so you get notifications when I go live. Uh, now, a couple personal things, or one personal thing that I want to mention in terms of programming. Uh, I do have a new job right now working with DraftKings on their news desk. So I'll be on the DK Live news desk uh, a few times a week uh, doing the news, but most of those shifts are going to be after I get done teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, so it's going to limit me, it's going to limit my streams a little bit on those days. Uh, you know, I'm going to try to maybe get some streams in before if I can, uh, but certainly be difficult for me to stream after. So Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday, and of course Sunday, those are going to be kind of the hotter days for me to get shows in. Once football's over and we're doing like PGA, MLB, stuff like that, uh, that's kind of the schedule I'll be working around. So I know that my streams have been a little uh, unscheduled. I've kind of just been doing it <clears throat> whenever within a given day, but uh, it's kind of just what my my life situation presents me. You know, gotta make, gotta get that bread, gotta make a little extra money. So, uh, you know, I had to pick up the second job. So, uh, want to keep building the brand here. Obviously, hoping that this is kind of the gateway out of all that stuff, and I can kind of just work for myself. So, anyway, that's it on the uh, on the life news. Just so you guys are kind of aware of how things are going uh, with me and with the show. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about my cash game lineup this week on DraftKings. Uh, put up a very respectable 135.64 DK points. Uh, I do believe that this was, you know, an upper percentile build, uh, not the nut build. I think, uh, you know, like guys like Levitan, I think the one difference we had, or the one key difference we had was uh, he had Robert Foster instead of Sterling Shepard. So... Uh, you know, that's the difference between a 90th percentile lineup and maybe like a 65th percentile lineup. Uh, but still a really good score here in cash games this weekend. And I think it just comes down to the running backs, honestly. Uh, you know, I think one of the big decisions that we had to make this weekend was, are we going to play uh, Jalen Samuels? You know, he's at 5,200. Um, you know, we had a big, big bump in price there. Patriots, you know, decent against running backs, nothing really crazy. But we know that uh, Samuel is really deriving a lot of what he did in the receiving game. Uh, so I saw a lot of paths to failure there. Uh, obviously, he he went nuts in the run game. Uh, you know, went for 22 DraftKings points, still ended up being a really really good play. Uh, but I think that I think that these three running backs were probably the optimal trio. Uh, certainly, was never not going to play Zeke. Um, I mean, his floor is just so, so high. 18.8 DraftKings points, I would say, is pretty much his floor. That's with a fumble. That's without scoring any touchdowns. Uh, but you can see seven catches. And, I mean, Zeke has just been a monster in terms of catching the football 7, 12, 6, and 5 in his last four games. As a receiver, I kind of expect that to continue the rest of the year. So uh, Zeke is a stone monster. Definitely was never going to fade him. Uh, and I think Mixon was probably the chalk also. You can see he was 100%. This is actually the three-man. Uh, you can see he was 100% the three-man between the three of us. But Mixon was obviously in a really good spot. 
uh, going up against a bad Oakland Raider run defense. Uh, Mixon had already been playing well in the previous three matchups against better defenses. Uh, so obviously we expected him to do well here against Oakland as a favorite uh, at home. Uh, and he was a total smash. The play that I think probably would have differentiated me from the field a little bit in cash was Cook. Uh, 32.3 DraftKings points. The best running back play on the whole board on the day. Uh, but, but you know, the reason that I thought Cook was a great play and I, the price I just thought, 6500 for me was just too cheap for a guy that seemed to be fully healthy that we know has an extremely high pass uh, role, passing down role, receiving role in the Vikings offense when he's healthy. Uh, and we knew that the primary reason that Minnesota fired offensive coordinator was because he was not running the football enough. And I think that that's ridiculous, obviously. Um, you know, you have a Super Bowl winning offensive coordinator. He understands that passing is more efficient than rushing. Uh, and yet you decide that you want to run the ball because you're a defensive minded head coach and Mike Zimmer. Uh, so you fire your offensive coordinator and you decide you're going to run the football. So I think that, you know, against a bad Miami run defense, especially uh, with tons of questions circling around the quality of the football team at home as big favorites. Uh, I just thought that cook was a, was a total smash and I, I really liked him as a play. So uh, these are the three running backs that I think were the best in cash. Uh, I'm sure that, Obviously, like if you faded Zeke and went to Samuels, you would have saved some money. You could have gone up at one of the receiver spots. Like that would have worked out well for you also. But I think that this was probably the optimal build. At running back, uh, at tight end, I'll just get that out of the way first because I think it's the most easy. Uh, but Eric Ebron, with his overall usage, I thought was a really good play. I think 5,900 was appropriate for him, given his role. Uh, but there weren't really any cheap tight ends that I thought had a shot at like good days, big days. Uh, nobody really that I thought was going to uh, way outperform their salary. And tight end was like a, just a complete, complete garbage fest on Sunday. So even though Ebron busted at 1.8, uh, did not kill us. And again, like I'd, I'd play him every time. I mean, I just think that the overall volume he's seen has been exceptional. The three targets were the lowest he's seen. Uh, I think week 11 he was inactive, so since week 10, week 11. Uh, but, you know, since Doyle's been out, eight targets, 16 targets, not uh, seven targets. I just thought that that was a really safe play, really high floor play. Uh, didn't work out, but that's why, you know, paying up in those positions sometimes can be tough. Uh, and then quarterback, I, I really liked Lamar Jackson. I thought that he had a great rushing matchup here with Tampa, who really hasn't stopped the run all year. Um, we had the bonus for a little bit there, and then we lost it at the end. Uh, also had it lost a fumble, so we ran a little poor in the rushing department. Definitely could have gotten over 20, but again, Jackson, I think, just such a high floor play. Uh, definitely somebody I'm going to be considering anytime he's under 6K, especially in a good matchup. Uh, and then at receiver, uh, loved Kenny Galladay this week. Maybe, maybe he was thin for cash. I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't. So I don't really consume a lot of content, so I'm kind of curious to know what people thought about Galladay as a cash play last week. I have a feeling he was not popular. Um, certainly didn't see him in a lot of my games. But I just thought that Galladay for the volume was just a steal at his price. I mean, 5400 for a guy that you know it was going to see like a really high percentage of targets in the offense. Uh, really good play to me. Uh, eight targets against Buffalo. Caught seven for 146 yards. and. You know, he was coming off a four-target game against Patrick Peterson, but we know that teams with good corners were just kind of throwing the kitchen sink at Galladay. Uh, but also the Bills, sorry, the Lions uh, didn't really throw the ball that much in week 14. You know, Galladay's four targets was still, you know, over 30% of the team targets in the offense. Uh, so if we just extrapolate that a little bit more, we were expecting him to see a tremendous volume and, you know, his weighted opportunity rating, all that stuff since Marvin Jones went down, has been, uh, if not the best, uh, certainly in the elite range. So I thought Galladay was a, was a really good play. And then I went with the cheap guys. I mean, I, I kind of bended the knee a little bit on Shepard. Not really the kind of guy I usually like to play, but I thought, you know, without OBJ, you know, we know Malcolm Butler resides on the other side of the ball for Tennessee. 
Uh, Giants were slight underdogs at home, so just thought that he'd get a little bit of volume that didn't really work out. Stills was the guy that really bricked for me because I, I thought his matchup was exceptional. Uh, Stills with Tannehill had a 0.61 weighted opportunity rating this season. Uh, a truly elite number. You know, only like 15 guys in the whole league have that. Um, and I thought that they would be trailing, which they were. But for some reason, Adam Gase decided still to not throw the football. Uh, Kenny Stills caught one pass very late in the game. Uh, really killed me in the props betting department. Really killed me. In this lineup, uh, still ended up obviously being a profitable lineup, but uh, I think that we needed to uh, get a little bit more action out of Stills to really crush, you know, to really beat the rake and, and, and dominate. So this was the lineup, uh, you know, Lions D. We just targeted Josh Allen. Oh, excuse me, but this is the lineup. I mean, I'm happy with it. I'm not like over the moon, but I'm happy with the process. I think we've really put together some really strong cash game lineups over the past like month or so. Really haven't put anything out that I thought was like a total brick fest. So that's really good. Hopefully we'll keep it rolling here in week 16. Week 16 kind of tough of a slate. Uh, but these are kind of like the, the best weeks because week 16 and 17, it's really all about information. Um, if you can get best information, if you can be the most aware of the injuries and who's going to rest and who's going to play and all this stuff and, and who's, who's good and who's going to see role changes. You're going to do really well. You know, week 16, we're going to see some guys resting. Week 17, we're going to see a ton of guys resting. This is a really good time, I think, to pounce for uh, DFS players. Uh, I'll just show you my, my favorite tournament lineup or my main tournament team from the weekend. Uh, pretty much just like pivoted against the Dalvin Cook play and went with a pass game stack for Minnesota. You can see that I got it pretty low owned. Uh, Cousins, Diggs, Thielen. Ran back with Kenny Stills. All those guys under 10% in the milli. So uh, that was a stack I really liked. I mean, I again, did not work out. Completely bricked everything. Didn't cash a single thing with this lineup. But uh, I do think that the process was sound. Uh, and that, you know, again, I'm leveraging off of something that I thought was going to be popular. Leveraging off of something that I was playing in cash. And, uh, you know, just kind of hoping to make something of it. Uh, the whole stack didn't really work out. But, uh. Oh, tired today. Sorry. Really like the process behind all the plays. You know, Jandon Nixon still, Samuels. Uh, and then went with Michael Gallup in the flex. Uh, had more air yards than Amari Cooper. Still had a weighted opportunity rating over 0 0.5. Uh, so I thought Gallup was a good play. But they, the the Dallas uh, Cowboys ended up like not throwing the ball very very much down the field, which. Actually, was the thing about that play that surprised me the most. Like, it wasn't that Gallup did nothing. It was just that, like, the ball never went down the field. So, uh, Dallas defense, uh, Indy defense, very, very underrated, I think. Um, but 105 points, obviously, a stone disaster. Uh, Would have been better off just, like, throwing my cash team in uh, all these tournaments. So, uh, that was kind of how my tournaments went this weekend. Completely bricked it on Yahoo. Uh, not the best week from a tournament perspective. But what did go well? And something that I'm really excited to talk about is the uh, draft best ball championship. I had this pulled up. I guess I'm going to pull it up. Uh, but my team has made it to the final round of the best ball championship. You can see that I finished second in my uh, league this week. Ran insanely, insanely pure. Uh, I know that 117.7 probably wasn't making it. In a lot of other contests, a bunch of people were telling me that my scores are very low. I definitely believe that. Uh, so we ran super, super hot uh, to make it here, but really excited. Um, you know, we're going to be in this final round, the final 60, where uh, 2K min payout, 100K up top. Uh, so, you know, you have a 1 in 60 chance to win 100K, you're going to feel pretty happy. So I'm, I'm really excited to have the opportunity. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about my team, because I, I drafted this team over the summer, obviously. We've been rolling, and uh, it is just like a pure zero RB team. You know, we got Matt Ryan, uh, Cam's my other quarterback, and the running backs, you know, Breida, Hines, Duke Johnson, Edmonds, James Conner, uh, Buck Allen. You know, these were all guys that I drafted very, very late. Uh, Conner, I think I took at almost the very end. Did it tell me? No, I, and in the mobile, in the mobile version, it tells you like where you drafted these guys. Uh, but 
really good team, or at least a decent team. The strength is definitely at receiver. Like I said, zero RB. So we have Alshon, Galladay, Julio, Amari, Gordon, Keenan Allen. You know, then we have Moncrief and Keelan Cole. But uh, really, we have what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Like six very legitimate receiving threats every week. Um, you know, gives us a really good shot to get three quality options in the receiver spots. And maybe a flex. Uh, this week we ended up getting Duke in the flex. Uh, and we have Kelsey, who has been, you know, just a stud all year. So pure zero RB team. The people have told me that zero running back is dead. It is not dead. <laughs> uh, and it's not dead in best ball. I really liked zero running back this year as a best ball strategy. I used it a ton. And uh, here I am in the final. So these are the guys that I'm rooting for. I do think that I'm going to have a pretty unique team construction going into this thing just because I, I would imagine that not a lot of people are zero RB. I'm sure a bunch of people have like the start running backs and you saw like this week, like if we get another repeat of week 15 where all these like stud running backs just brick, um, you know, then I'm going to be in good shape. So I'm hoping that, you know, my receivers do really well. Would love to get, I think like optimally I need to get a hundred points I need to get 100 points probably out of like my three receivers, tight end, and one of my running back spots. If I can get 100 points from those five spots, you know, 20 points a spot, uh, then I'm going to be in really good shape because then I, you know, then it's just a matter of the flex, QB, and the other running back. Uh, you know, we could get up to maybe, you know, a buck 40 or something like that. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what it's going to take to win this thing. I'm, I'm curious to see what a lot of the other roster builds end up looking like. Um, because I'm sure that, like, I have to think that some of these James Conner lineups or th some of these teams that had Conner ended up not making it to the final because, because he was injured. Um, so if we get Conner back and he ends up being, like, somewhat low-owned and he plays, he's playing in a really good, matchup with the saints uh, i don't know i'm pretty excited i'm trying not to get like two overboard but you know the contest was a 45 or forty six thousand uh 46 or forty five thousand uh person I keep saying dollar uh you know it's forty five thousand people in a, in a tournament and you make it into the top 60 you feel pretty good so uh this is definitely going to be my best cash of the year though depending on how we do here uh, I mean, no matter how we do here, it'll be my best cash of the year. But would love to, would love, 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 obviously, to go for a big score. Um, really like the team. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I tried looking ahead to some of the matchups, and we've got uh, Brita has. Uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't show you in advance, huh? I, I'm like really waiting for it to load for week 16, so I can kind of see all the matchups. Uh, I know that Ryan and Julio are in Carolina, and that's really the matchup that I think is going to end up mattering the most for me. Like, I, I don't think a lot of people have Julio because Julio is like a first round pick, and I'm sure a lot of teams that made it drafted like Kamara or McCaffrey, uh, you know, basically are running back in the first round. So, huh, excuse me. So, we'll see what happens. Um, Obviously, some of these guys sitting, like Aaron Rodgers, might sit this week. Uh, Cam might sit, which would hurt me because I have him. I uh, would really want to see Cam play, obviously, but he might sit. Uh, Gurley may sit. That would help me, obviously, because I don't have him. So uh, that's really what we're kind of waiting on is, is basically a bunch of the injury situations and uh, the schedule. So we'll kind of see how things play out, but pretty pumped. Uh, you know, I wrote an article over at Fantasy Insiders before the season, you know, talking about like kind of how to win this thing. And, uh, you know, I did advocate for zero running back as a strategy. So it would be cool if like after writing the article and all that stuff that, uh, you know, I ended up winning. it. So anyway, you guys don't care probably a ton about my teams. I, I just think it's really interesting. I'm really excited for this, really happy about, uh, draft presenting this, uh, tournament to us. So, uh, that'll be that. So tomorrow, like I said, I'm going to be working, so no daytime stream, but we will still, we're actually going to have a double feature tomorrow night uh, because Jonesy has some uh, family stuff he has to do on Thursday. So Wednesday, tomorrow, we're going to have 
715 line the points and then around 815 830 we're going to have on the daily so we're going to have a, a double feature for you tomorrow night that means we likely will not have a stream Thursday unless I decide to just do something on my own. We have no Thursday night football this week, so no uh, showdown to break down. Maybe we'll just talk about the Saturday games or something like that. Um, and then we'll talk to you, obviously, on Saturday for the picks against the spread. We're 9-1 and one the last two weeks against the spread on the Saturday show. So definitely make sure you check that out. And on Sunday, of course, 8.15 a.m., you will have everything you need for the Week 16 main slate. So thanks for checking it out, guys. Hope you find the time to sub either at YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, and thanks for coming out. You know, hopefully, you know, root for my guys here. If you're not, if you're not in the best ball championship, root for me this weekend. Really excited for it. Uh, but I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.